Hello everybody and welcome back to the testing grounds. I want to do just a quick video today showcasing the ice maker because I think there's been a lot of good content out there that showcases how powerful the ice makers are, right? Here's water just skyrocketing down in temperature in this in these things. It does produce its own heat, so you have to counterbalance it against that. But this is this is a lot of cooling. And on the net basically, each of these ice makers at least as of this video as of this moment and they will do a little bit of nerfs and tweaks and whatnot in the future um, but as of this video the ice makers have about the same cooling as nine wheeze warts and this is a fairly easy to tech tech to reach early on uh, it doesn't really require anything crazy and so if you find yourself on a seed that doesn't have an ice biome or the ice biome is very far away and you have more immediate needs for cooling down your base uh, these are a great option. I think they're a great option throughout the game. But a lot of the content out there has, has been showcasing the power of them, how quickly these things cool down water and, and on the net how much cooling power they have. But they don't really put it together in a way that makes a lot of sense. A lot of them just take the ice and they dump it into a pool, uh, sometimes the pool that they're drawing water from. And you'll see these systems just in the long run, they just turn the entire pool into ice and they don't really get that much cooling done because the ice isn't transferring or isn't absorbing much heat from its surroundings. The thermal conductivity isn't very good. And so I think the main point of this video, the main thing I want to emphasize is that if you want to use ice makers and really harness their power, you need to also build a heat exchanger to take advantage of them. So I wanted to show off a really quick and easy way that you could set up a heat exchanger. This isn't meant to be an ideal build. It's just something that it's meant to be, um, you know, these four high rooms that are very common in a lot of people's bases. Just to set up a four high rooms, we have a four high room that is our reservoir, a four high room that is our ice maker room. I've made it uh, 20 tiles wide simply because I wanted to, to be able to take advantage of two auto sweepers and have a pitcher pump in here, but you could do things a little bit differently, right? You could have this four by 16, which is kind of the more standard setup, but let me go ahead and refill the hydrogen, because it's running out in my one room here. We're gonna put in hydrogen that's about 72 degrees Celsius, like so. Uh, we have 72 degree uh, Celsius crude oil, and we're gonna cool them both down. This is a little bit colder than it should be, I think, but we're gonna cool them back down to around 20 degrees using these ice makers and using this heat exchanger. Let me go ahead and vacuum out. Yeah, let me vacuum out these areas and we can get the exact temperature that this is getting cooled down to. Yeah, this is around 20 degrees actually, okay. In any case, um, so we have these ice makers going. We have our heat exchanger room up here. We have our reservoir that we're filling up these ice makers with over here. Uh, it's a pretty simple setup. Let's go to shipping, conveyor rail. The first thing I do is I, and this can just be normal tile. This doesn't have to be metal tile. Igneous tile works fine as well. Uh, the first thing I do is I wanna make sure this ice room stays cool because these, these ice makers themselves produce um, four and a half kilo DTUs per second. That's a pretty good amount of heat. So the first priority is you want these things to cool down themselves. And so I have my uh, sweepers loading things up into these conveyor loaders. They're loading them up into uh, conveyor rail. And the conveyor rail is first traveling underneath these ice makers to make sure that this reservoir doesn't get too hot, these ice makers don't get too hot, that this room stays relatively chilly because it's gonna be where duplicates are uh, and running around and doing stuff. Then it travels up to these iron metal tiles. This is all just easy to obtain stuff. This is iron ore, iron, some gold. Uh, no steel or anything is really necessary here. Uh, all, this, all this works fine with whatever materials you have basically. And we see the ice traveling around here and it reaches a point where it melts, right? It's absorbed enough heat and it finally melts, right? So all across here, you're gonna have this ice melting a little bit, melting a little bit, melting a little bit. And all that water is just gonna kind of drip down to here and then drip back into our input reservoir, right? So we have a, a closed loop, whoops, uh, didn't mean to do that. So we basically have a closed loop here of our water. The water goes into the ice makers, it gets turned into ice, it's get, uh, it gets uh, sent through these conveyor rails along through here, and then the ice melts and drips back down into our reservoir. Any ice that gets left over, and in this case, because we have a lot of hot stuff coming in, uh, we don't have leftover ice, but any leftover ice is just gonna be dropped and, f and put back into this conveyor loader, right? That's the way we wanna set up. We don't wanna drop the ice into some pool of water, 
right? We want to drop the ice back into our heat exchanger system. We built, built this for a reason. We want to we want to recirculate it back in if the system goes cold. We see it's it's handling things pretty well. This is 20 degrees, 21 degrees, roughly speaking. This is you know the output that you would get from an electrolyzer room. Um, it's even easier to cool down oxygen because it has less thermal mass. Uh, here we're using crude oil. This could be polluted water potentially. As long as it isn't water, you're fine, right? But this could be um, any system where you have a um, thermal aqua tuner, thermal regulator, anything like, like that that's heating up some area. You can take the, the hot stuff from there and pump it out through here if you want to get it cold again. A lot of options. Um, but basically, I just want to show off that this heat exchanger is able to handle a large amount of heat, right? We have this pump going full blast, we have this, uh, this pump going full blast, and we're just running them, right, through the same tiles that we are running our shipping, right? I've set it up in a counterflow heat exchange because that's going to be a little bit more efficient in terms of this heat transfer. You don't necessarily need to do a counterflow heat exchange. Counterflow meaning that the cold stuff is coming in from this direction, the hot stuff is coming in from this direction. You, you could set this up where they're, they're both traveling along the same line. That'd be fine. You know, you can tweak the system to, depending upon what you need. Um, you could also run another heat exchanger down through here. Right here we have a lot of fairly temperate water. Uh, you could have something circulating around your base to kind of keep your base around the whatever temperature this water's at. That also works. Um, but the main thing, the main point I want to emphasize, you need this heat exchanger to make this system work. You need a heat exchanger because you're just not going to get good conductivity from the ice to whatever you're dumping it into. You need to be sending it through a system which is going to radiate, uh, well I mean radiating the cold is the wrong way to, to kind of phrase it, but a way that's going to um, exchange the heat very efficiently with whatever it is you're trying to cool down. Whether it's oil, whether it's some gas from an electrolyzer room, right? This doesn't take too much in terms of duplicate labor. And this is a fairly foolproof system. Let's say we went ahead and we said, I am going to shut off the power to these pumps, right? So let's say I don't have anything more to, to cool down. Obviously the answer to, you know, having too much stuff to, to cool down is I just need to build more ice makers and extend out this room, right? I just need to increase my capacity, my cooling capacity if I want to uh, uh, continue this system. But let's say, let's say the system goes cold, right? I'm no longer pumping in hydrogen or oil, right? This is all done. Uh, this is all done. My electrolyzer room turned off, let's say. If we go to temperature here, we're going to see this slowly start to get colder and colder and colder, right? As, as we get a, the ice melting over here, there's going to be no heat to kind of replace that coldness. So some ice melts over here. Suddenly all of this is, is inundated with a bunch of zero degree water and it cools down. And eventually what's going to happen is we are going to get ice falling back into here, right? And it is going to be recirculated through the system. And so what the system is ultimately going to look like when we're kind of all said and done, right? Is this line is gonna fill up with a bunch of ice and then we're gonna end up with a bunch of ice stored in these conveyor rails and a bunch of ice kind of sitting around on the floor. And when the system heats back up again, right? We'll have a little bit of ice up here, but it's gonna remelt right? Like this water will turn into ice, but this ice won't be adding to that system because it'll just be, you know, running through here and, and falling back down into here. Um, when the system freezes up, like it's starting to do now, we're just going to be accumulating cold in this room. And then the next time we boot the system back up, we're going to have a lot of cooling kind of already raised. So we see uh, this, ice, this all starting to turn to ice, right? Up here, we see more and more ice making its way down to here. So this system reaches its sort of its lockup state, right? This is all fine though, right? Now that we have, we could have a thermal sensor up here that says, okay, this is below zero degrees Celsius, turn these things off. If we wanted to save the, the power, save the duplicate labor, save whatever, right? But basically what's gonna happen is this room that we have here is just gonna slowly start turning to negative 20 degrees. And in fact, the way we're gonna be doing it is that we're not gonna have a bunch of ice down here in our reservoir. The ice is all gonna be up here, right? Ready uh, to be loaded up into these conveyor loaders when the system boots itself back up again. And when it boots itself back up again and this ice starts melting again, the water's gonna refill our reservoir. So there's really very little in the way of failure states here, right? This is all a pretty easy system. Like if I took this now, if we go to temperature, 
right? This is around negative 10 degrees. Uh, we could get it all the way down to negative 20 if we let the system run continuously, right? Uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because that'll take a while. Let's go to power and conductive wire, uh, wire this back up. So we turn the system back on and what we're gonna see is that we are going to start um, getting water again, right? This hot stuff is gonna start melting stuff. This ice is slowly gonna turn back into water. Then this ice that's running through here is slowly gonna deplete, right? We're slowly gonna start working through our backlog of ice down here, and we're gonna start refilling our reservoir, right? So there's really not much of a way for the system to fail. Let me go ahead and also, um, basically these outputs are gonna be colder for a while, so you will have to deal with that. There's kind of spikes and variation in temperature. With, but this is a very simple system I want to emphasize. There, there are more complex things you could do if you need precise temperatures for this, this area. But um, let's go to fill, vacuum, delete these, right? This crude oil is now at around negative four degrees. This hydrogen is around four degrees. Yep. And so we're just starting to melt our ice in the system. We go back to shipping, we see it starting to deplete now, right? We've run out of our backlog of ice over here and we're back into normal operation. So you don't really have to worry about this system, right? As long as you're comfortable with this room and these outputs reaching negative 20 degrees, which is the minimum temperature of these ice makers, right? Or there'll be a little bit more than 20, negative 20 degrees, but as long as you're fine, right? As long as this isn't water, or you know, you're, you're, this isn't really thermally connecting with the rest of your base in a big way, right? Um, this system can go cold and it will slowly turn all of this water into ice and, and ready it to get loaded into these conveyor loaders the next time this system kicks on, right? It, it stores up cold and it still has this very efficient system for then turning that cold into you know, cool products of things that you care about. That's it for the video. I've kind of ran a little bit longer than I needed to, um, but the main point I want to emphasize, you need a heat exchanger if you're gonna be using these ice makers. I think they're very powerful tools. I think they're by intention very powerful tools. I think that in the final build of the game, these ice makers are still gonna be very good. Um, this is the way to go about things. Don't bother with icy fans. Uh, don't bother with just dumping your ice into some area. I mean, those are simple, but they don't really get the job done. This is the way you want to approach things. And uh, that's all I want to say. Okay, I'll catch you guys next time.